Well, good morning, Solid Rock. Ah, but so many of you here, I know we can do better than that. Good morning, Solid Rock. I felt it up here. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Would you stand to your feet, please? Go shake someone's hand if you haven't already. But like I always say, a second time's not going to hurt you. Can I get a little more on the guitar microphone, please? You know this song. It's called Let Everything That Has Breath. Praise you in the morning, praise you in the evening, praise you when I'm young and when I'm old. Praise you when I'm laughing, praise you when I'm grieving, praise you every season of my soul. If we could see how much you're worth, your power, your might, your endless love. Surely we would never cease to praise you. Let everything, let everything that, let everything that, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that, let everything that, let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Everybody breathe in. Breathe back out. And this song is about you, okay? Praise you in the heavens, joining with the angels, praising you forever and the day, Lord. Praise you on the earth now, joining with creation, calling all the nations to your praise. If we could see how much you're worth, your power, your might, your endless love, surely we would never cease to praise you. Let everything, let everything that, let everything that, let everything that has breath, Praise the Lord, let everything that, let everything that, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Did he wake you up this morning, church? Did he give you gas in your car to get here this morning? Did he make you able to be in here this morning in one way or another? So let's praise him together. If we could see how much you're worth, your power, your might, your endless love, surely we would never cease to praise you. Let everything, let everything that, let everything that, let everything that has breath, Praise the Lord, let everything that, let everything that, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Church, you may be seated. Now, I don't know about you, but... I don't know of any other churches quite like Solid Rock. Amen. And I'm proud of that. I don't say that to pander, okay? That's not, that's not, pander away, pander away. But no, I, I'm proud of this church. I love this church. I love the spirit of family that we have here. And I'm grateful that we get to feel the Holy Spirit move in this place um, on a regular routine basis. And one of those reasons I feel that he feels welcome to do that, I mean, it's his church, it's his house. I tell Amarissa when we come to church, we're going to God's house, going to God's house. She's probably like, that's a big house. Um, But one of the reasons I feel we 
feel the Holy Spirit move here so often is because the altar is always open. It's not, uncom- it's not unheard of at all to see people come to the altar to pray, to thank the Lord, to ask him for help at any time in the service. And so the song that we would like to share with you this morning goes along with that. And this song is originally by Elevation Worship. It's called, O Come to the Altar. Are you burning and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling.
like I said, the altar is always open at solid rock, even if you have to break in through the door to get to it, but please don't do that, okay? Just let somebody know you need in there. It's all right. It's okay. Someone will open the door if it's locked. But it's good to see you all this morning. It is the first Sunday in March. I look forward to seeing what the Lord has planned for us through this service, uh, through the upcoming services in March. I do wish to announce that this evening at 6 p.m. is a teens worship service made just for the teens starting at 6 p.m. at the school. See, Alex, if you have any questions, I look forward to seeing what happens with that. Um, a ladies' prayer meeting is always the first Sunday, I'm sorry, first Friday of the month. We just had one this past Friday, and April 1st will be the next one. A men's prayer breakfast uh, next Saturday, the 12th at 7.30 a.m. See Alan if you have any questions. We'll be at the schoolhouse. There is another Messianic praise service planned for this month as well. I loved the last one, and I know you will too. Um, it'll be in the chapel at 6.30 on Friday, March 25th. Um, now, the 20th of this month, we have Chris and Kristen Heiss coming to sing for us in concert. And Saturday, March 19th, here at the church, will be the, uh, the big uh, food bank service, as always. I'll read last month's verse of the month, because it's still pertinent even into March, that 1 John 4.10, it says, This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Now, March is full of birthdays. Oh, my gosh, y'all. And anniversaries. I'll, I'll go through them. And if you have any to add, please let me know. Loretta May on the 1st. Helen Bainbridge on the 3rd. Dr. Marvin Busey on the 6th. Haley McKay on the 8th. Valerie Marika on the 17th. Shelby Dawson on the 19th, and Dr. Glenn Dawson on the 21st. 22nd is Michelle Thomas and Dana Mayberry. The 27th, Ian Moses, and the 28th, Bobby Woody. And I'm sure we have others to add, but like I said, see me to get them added. Oh, I see a pointing happening over there, a pointing. Um, some anniversaries as well. We'd like to wish a happy anniversary to the late Dr. Oscar and Patsy Blanchard. Happy anniversary in heaven on the 12th to you guys. Mike and Ann Duff on the 19th, and the pastors, David and Donna Cash, on the 31st. Yes, yes. At this time, I would ask if I could have a couple of volunteers to help with our tithes and offerings, please. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. One more time. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me.
Amen. Amen. Yeah. No, no offense to our, our other deacons and deaconesses. Y'all are great, but um, that one's going to pray from now on for the offering. All right? I, I, I have spoken. I have spoken. That's right. Now, take, take control. You know it. You know it. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe are you. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Church, you are in for a treat. It's been a little while since we've been able to do this. But kids, this message coming up is exactly meant for you. It's meant for all y'all. Okay? But if I can, um, if I can ask the kids to either, well, they're all kind of in the same. She going over there. All right. Um, Y'all welcome Miss Caitlin Bing. To the well, I just want to say, too, that we started this, what did I say, Dave, six years ago? Something like that, maybe a little longer than that, with the older generation there and now we have a brand new generation that we are going to be reading from and and doing that this morning so I just want to praise the Lord for that and thank him for that um, before I get started I'm going to pass out some glasses okay I'm going to put some on this row and some on the back row and I want everybody to try them on and I want you to look through them and see if it looks funny or not So try them on and just pass them down the line. I want everybody to get a good look through those glasses. And then I want you to tell me what you see. Does it look weird, Trevor? Looks weird. A little blurry, right? We can't see clearly through those, can we? Right. They don't look clear, do they? Thank you. Make sure everybody gets a turn. That's okay. All right, so I'm going to start with our Bible verse first, and it comes from Genesis 1-1. We're going to start at the very beginning, and it says, In the beginning, God created the sky and the earth. So have you ever tried on a pair of glasses that did not belong to you? We just did, right? We just did. Things look very different, don't they? Like looking through different glasses, every person looks at the world in a certain way. We call this a worldview. We've heard that word plenty of times, haven't we, guys? The way that we see our world affects how we live and the choices that we make. So what you believe is very important. Some people think the world happened for no reason. It just appeared out of nowhere in one big poof. We know that's not the truth, right? Others are not sure how it came to be and don't really know why they are here. The very first verse in the Bible gives us the correct glasses that fit perfectly and through which everything looks crystal clear. So we're going to answer three important questions about this verse we just said, read, which says, In the beginning, God created the sky and the earth. So in the beginning, this takes us back to the very beginning before anything was. The beginning of time. So everybody, close your eyes real quick. And let's be as quiet as we can. Do you see anything? Do we hear anything? That's what it was like. In the beginning, there was nothing. It was dark. It was quiet. We couldn't see. We couldn't hear anything. There was nothing, right? Nothing. So then we look at the next word in the verse, which says, In the beginning, God. God was the beginning. It was dark and empty, and God was there. He was in the beginning before time even began. So have you ever wondered where he came from, or how we got there. We've all kind of thought that question before, right? So even though it's hard to understand, sometimes our mind have a really hard time comprehending things from the Bible. But the Bible tells us that he was always there, and in the beginning there was God, and he was always, always there. 
So in the beginning, what did God do? Do we know that answer, anybody? What did God do in the beginning? Ed Corbin. He made the planet Earth, yes. So he created the sky and the earth. So out of darkness and emptiness, he made the whole world. What a wise, creative, and amazing God that we have, right? Because everything that you see, God made that. He spoke it into existence. All he had to do was speak, and it happened. That's amazing. So now that you understand this verse, you have a worldview. You know how we got here, and when you see a beautiful sunset, you know who painted it. I always think that when I look at sunsets or sunrises, and I look at the sky and how beautiful it is, there's no other way that can be unless God himself did that, right? It's beautiful, all the miracles that we see. So as you begin, we're going to try to think about these verses during the week. Uh, we're putting God's word in our heart and in our minds. So his word, the Bible, is there for you, it's there for me, and guess what? It never goes away. No matter what anybody does, no matter what anybody says, no matter what anybody tries to do, they will never be able to extinguish the word of God. Right. Never. God's word will always, always stand. So we're gonna, I want, I'm going to say a couple words, and I want you guys to repeat after me, okay? So God's word is for me. For me. God's word is for me. It is in me. And it is working through me. And just like his love, it goes on and on forever. Let's say a, a quick prayer, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this day. I want to thank you for these beautiful children that you have sitting here this morning. Father, I ask that these words will sink into their heart and their mind, and when they leave, Father, that they will continue to think about these things. Lord, I, I pray that you would open their knowledge of understanding, Lord, so as they hear your word, they would understand it, Father. You, you said it best. Believe as a little child. It's simple as that, Father. I pray that this whole congregation would just believe as a small child, that we wouldn't ask questions or doubt you, Father, but that we would just know and believe, and I pray that for our church, Lord. Father, I ask that you would touch and bless each every child, each person in this building, Father God. And I ask that you would do a mighty work within us and in our church. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. I, um, I have one more thing, if you don't mind. I'm using my grandma's Bible, y'all, and I just feel like this is, I just love this so much. Thank you, Grandma, for letting me borrow this. Um. I was talking to Grandma this morning, and I didn't realize it until I was talking to her, but we are under definitely spiritual warfare, but on our health, on our health, there's a lot of people in our church that are sick or that are hurting or that are struggling in, in different ways, myself included. I have really had a hard time probably the last month, month and a half with, with my health, um, and so, you know what? We're going to stop that. We're, we're going to rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. We're not going to accept this. We're not going to sit here and continue to take these spiritual attacks and not do anything about it. Um, so I'm going to anoint the whole congregation um, right now just in spirit and, and in Jesus' word. So, Father God, I ask that you would anoint every person that's in this building right now, Lord. I ask, Jesus, that you would touch them that you would heal them, Father God. Whatever ailment that they're dealing with, whatever pain that they may have, whatever inflammation may be in their body, Father, I mean even mentally, Father, physically, whatever it may be, Lord, I ask that you would reach your hand down from the heavens, Father, that you would touch us right now on the tops of our heads. Let us feel this go through our body, Lord, all the way down to the soles of our feet, Jesus. I ask that you would heal every inch of us. Father, right now I rebuke this enemy that is trying to conquer, Lord, that is trying to destroy, that is trying to divide. 
Father, I just rebuke him right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray the blood that was shed on Calvary, Father, would cover us all. Lord, I anoint these doors in this church, these windows, anything that may lead to the outside, Father God, I anoint it right now and ask that no enemy, nothing would be allowed to cross this threshold, Father. I pray that today we would worship you, that we would reclaim our health and healing, Father God, that we can come back stronger than ever to fight for you, Lord. And I just want to thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. And I ask these things believing, Father God, that you will do them. This is not a void prayer, Father. I'm asking, believing that you will heal this church, this congregation, Father God. I ask that. And I'm going to end with this um, verse right here that spoke to me several months ago. It comes from Acts 9, verse 31. And it says, Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and were edified, and walking in fear of the Lord, and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, were multiplied. So I, I pray that over this congregation. Let us multiply. Let us stand tall. Let us be healed. Let us work for the Lord. The Lord is willing and ready. We need to ask. And Father, I ask that right now. I ask that for all of us, Jesus. Come down. Let us do your will. Strengthen us. Heal us so that we can be 100% ready to go out and proclaim your name. Amen. At this time, the nursery age children are dismissed. If you will follow Miss Darla and Miss Kayla. We have, they will take you up there. Thank you. And now at this time, I'd like you to please put your hands together for Mr. Nick, uh, Reverend Nicky Blanton. He's going to be our round robin this morning. Before I get started, just a couple things. I want to say that, uh, just give you a, all you Eskimos out there, you uh, solid rock Eskimos, this, I know this warm weather is throwing you for a curve, but uh, I do want to say a big God bless you to you. As, as ungenuine as that sounds, I, I mean it, I mean it, because I know that uh, you'd, you'd, you wouldn't have me frozen out. But <laughs> Before I get into what I'm going to share, I do want to say one thing. Um, in uh, Matthew, the 11th chapter, the 6th verse, Jesus said, blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Now, to Christians, that makes all the sense in the world. And you'd say, why would Jesus say such a thing? It would just seem so unnecessary because of the great sacrifice that he made on the cross. It doesn't, it doesn't compute in the reborn in mind. But if you're not saved, then you gravitate toward that scripture and say, blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. What does that mean? Let me, let me just give you a little example of, of uh, when I was younger, let's just say I was at a party. This, this is all uh, hypothetical. And I was wanting to try to pick up a girl. If somebody would have come into the party and mentioned the name of Jesus, I would have kind of treaded a little out of the way. I would have got a little distance there. That's what the scripture is talking about. In reverse, blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. I just, I just wanted to share that because uh, that, that has been on my mind uh, lately. And, and another thing I'll say, and this word came to me strong yesterday, and I know why. It was prepare, prepare, prepare. And then we were bathed in an, in an anointing from our dear sister, Caitlin. Oh my gosh, there's no need to have anything else on your mind this morning than Jesus Christ, than the Word of the living God. It's been taken care of. What she said are words written in stone, do you understand? She spoke them in the faith that, that God has put within us, each one of us. So no distractions, my friends. All right? No distractions here. We don't have them. They've been bound already in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Infirmities, don't be concerned about them. They've been taken care of because the faith has already been spoken over them. 
All right, can I get a witness? Yes, amen, absolutely. This morning I want to go to, uh, if you have your Bibles, you may want to turn to the 73rd chapter of uh, Psalms, please. Uh, We're going to start out there and uh, we'll just see where we go from there. 73rd Psalms. And I'm going to probably read about 17 verses, okay? 17 verses of the 73rd Psalm. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, and for there were no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly. Concerning oppression, they speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore his people return hither. The waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, how doeth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say, I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then understood I therein. Today, I want to talk to you about It'll be, in the, it'll be in the ninth chapter of Hebrew. I want to talk to you about the contents of the ark of God. Now, the ark was made as a meeting place. It's where God would meet with Israel or the spokesman for Israel at the time, Moses, and then Joshua. But the, I want to talk about the contents of the ark. All right, so I'm going to read, uh, let's see. I guess we'll try to read about uh, eight verses in Hebrew, the ninth chapter, all right? Verily, the first covenant had no ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first, wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showed bread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was, do we know the contents of the Ark of the Covenant, solid rock? Did we know it? I bet we did. Three, right? Three things. Three things were in the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, here we go. Wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded, Now, assembly, just shout out the last one. The table of the commandments, the Ten Commandments, the tables of stone, written with the very finger of God. All right, let me read a few more. We're going to come back to that. And over it, the cherubims of the glory shadowing the mercy seat. Now, keep in mind, you know, something uh, that really brings a smile to my face is to know that God came down upon the mercy seat. And right under him were what would be in the Ark of the Covenant. Aaron's rod that budded. The bowl of manna that fed Israel. We'll talk about that in just a minute. And the Ten Commandments. The word of the living God. Of which we cannot now speak partially. Or particularly, I mean. Now, when these things were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone, once a year, not without blood. Now see, that's God's design. That man didn't come up with that. That was God. Not without blood. 
which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was yet standing. And we're talking about Jesus Christ, who would be the high priest, who was Melchizedek, didn't have birth of days, don't have end of days, only person that could ever carry the Lamb of God, the holy sacrifice, into the Holy of Holies before the throne room of God. Only one that could do that was himself, was Jesus Christ. I just throw that in there. That's, okay, now, let's talk about the Ten Commandments first, all right? That's, that's where I want to go because uh, we know the Ten Commandments to be uh, the Word of God. So let me share just a few scriptures about the Word of God. First, let me do this. Let me, let me, let me read uh, from, uh, you don't have to turn here, but it's in uh, Exodus, the 25th chapter, the 22nd verse. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee far above the, from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony, and of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. And we know them to be well, I'll get that in a minute. Let's, let's, let's do the word. Do the word. Now, what, what, what are this, this meeting place and these words were given to us? What, what do the words do? Well, they instruct us in the will of God, right? They, we, we know his will from studying his word. That, that's how we come to a better understanding of it. Isaiah 57, 15 says this. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place. Let him also that hath a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. A contrite means re repentive, if you didn't know. I had, to look, I had to look that up myself, but the repentive ones. So we know the word, what does it do? It revives. Amen? Uh, there's, there's like a, a, a bouncing back. A refreshing of the spirit uh, smiles are regained from the living word. Amen. How many people can testify of that? I got to shoot up both hands on that one. I mean, c c come on. You revived every time you go to the word of God. Every time you go to these holy scriptures, you can be revived. It, it does revive. Titus 3, 5 says this. Not of works of righteousness which have been done, but according to his mercy he saved us. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Now, I believe that when Jesus Christ hung on Calvary's cross and when they stabbed him in the side with the spear, the scripture says that water and blood came out. I believe that the washing of the water by the word is the regeneration of from that holy water that come forth from his side and the holy blood which would represent the Holy Spirit. Amen? What are we talking about? We're talking about a regeneration every day. We're talking about a regeneration every day. All right? Isaiah 40, 31. But they, that, you should know this. It's a very popular scripture. But if you don't, learn it. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Why? Because you are renewed by the word of God from day to day. From the time you crack this scripture open to the time you close it. If you want to be renewed. A negative thought come into my brain. And I'm tempted to share it, but I won't. Yeah, I'm going to say it. If you want to lay in your pool of self-pity, Israel trampled the desert 40 years. They could have went into the Holy Land in 11 days. That's right. They whined before the Lord for 40 years. Yeah. Now you lay in your selfishness all you want to, God will not get any glory from that. Exactly. If you want to be revived, if you want to be renewed, if you want to be regenerated, 
get you a copy of the Word of the Living God. We got plenty. We'll be glad to give you. Listen. You keep the Word. Don't let nothing separate you from it. And the Word will keep you. It won't not let nothing separate you from it. Amen? You say a tangible thing. Well, I'm going to tell you what, what's in the very first chapter of St. John. The beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Verse 14, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen? Oh, let's talk about the bread of life, the manna, the golden pot, representing life-sustaining. How long do you think Israel was fed the manna from heaven? Forty years. Forty years. Let me see. I wrote it down. It started the 15th day of the second month after leaving Egypt. That would be around the year 1491 B.C. That's when the manna started. When did the manna cease? Around 1451, after Israel had walked with the Ark of the Covenant, the priests touched the feet of the Jordan, the Jordan rolled back, they walked on dry land into the Promised Land after they ate the corn of Cana in the Promised Land. The next day, the manna stopped. They were in the Promised Land. We know that the manna represents the bread of life. 648 in St. John says this. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures with that. Let me just, let me just turn to the 6th chapter of St. John. Um, 648. I want, to, I want to read a few more scriptures uh, with that. 648. Right, I should have had it marked, but I didn't. Shame on me. All right. I'm going to read down to 58, okay? This, uh, 648 says that Jesus says this, I am that bread of life. There you go. The manna from heaven. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which came down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am that living bread which came down from heaven. If a man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews, therefore, strove among themselves, saying, How can this man <clears throat> give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat of the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and as I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead, he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. One other thing, Aaron's rod that budded, now, when I was going over this, one of my favorite passages of Scripture came to me, and I'm going to assume there's a reason. It talks about the true vine. I'll read five verses from the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. So enlightening. Let me back up just a minute and say something about Aaron's rod that buddy. The people of Israel had whined and whined and whined before the Lord. And they needed to be represented. God told Moses to tell them, or Joshua, I don't remember who it was, to go cut you a stick for each tribe. Twelve, twelve sticks going to write, going to represent each tribe of Israel at that time. They were laid up before the Lord. And the Lord chose which one, which would be the tribe of Levi, the priestly tribe. Not only was did it did 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 the rod bloom 
a stick cut. The next day, it bloomed, it blossomed, and it bare almonds. It bare fruit in one evening at the voice and instruction of God. Want that? That is why we go to the resurrection and the life, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word that I have spoken unto you. Say that with me. Now you are clean through the word that I have spoken unto you. That's the words of Christ. Amen. Let's talk about the scriptures if you're wondering. Amen. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Glory to God for that. And you'll find Jesus said he's the resurrection and life. As that old dead stick bear fruit. In one day, so when we leave this earthly tabernacle, we will bear fruit in, in the glorious kingdom. But you and I, because we're blood-bought, are resurrected even now. And in the newness of this life, we are responsible for making that known before people that Jesus is the resurrection and life, and that He is our Lord and God. Amen? I'm almost through. I want to go to, I'm going to read this. Uh, let me do this. Let, let's, let's not do that. Uh, I'm going to read the fifth, from the fifth chapter of Matthew, the 17th verse. Fifth chapter of Matthew, one verse. We'll, we end, we'll, we'll wrap that up with this one. Matthew 5, 17 says that, uh, oh, I ain't found it yet. Might help me to find it. I know, I know what it says, but I don't want to mess it up and quote it wrong. 5.17. Jesus speaking. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, the contents of the Ark of the Covenant. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. That's what Jesus says. That's what Jesus did. Amen. You know, people look for the Ark of the Covenant even today. And in Jeremiah, you'll find that uh, it was spoken of that, that the ark wouldn't be found. If you ask me, I'm going to give you my understanding. And I know you're not asking me, but I'm just going to share it with you. In my opinion, the ark of the covenant is in heaven. That's where I think it's at. Jesus came to fulfill. There's like We don't have to put out fleeces anymore. God give us, put faith within each of us. Not a representative every so many hundred of years, but you're all representative who are blood-bought and in the name of Jesus Christ. Every one of you. Amen. Amen. You can do that song now. Song now or what? Do it. Do it now. Okay. All right. So. All right, I'm going to sing a couple of songs now because you all know I'm a song hog and, and, and I had to, I, I love to beg, beg Candy to let me sing. She's pretty good about that. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, like I'm gonna tell you now. <laughs> but anyway, if y'all bear with me a minute. You know, Jesus said, "Let let these sayings sink sink down into your ears." Amen. We're supposed to meditate on the Word of God. We're supposed to think on the Word of God. That that that's what we're supposed to do. Amen. It's supposed to. Uh, the Scripture says, I think it was King David said that that he meditated on the Word of God day and night that he might not sin against Him. Why? Because sin separates us from the love of God, from His presence. Amen? Okay. We re <laughs> Are we re you ready? Unusual song, but it hits me between the eyes. There's a whole lot of stubborn in this room. There's a whole lot of pride that won't let go. There's a whole lot of stubborn in this room. 
It shows no sign of giving up control. I've drawn all the curtains and I've turned out the lights. Scared to death somebody else might see. There's a whole lot of stubborn in this room. And there's no one here but me. The demons in this room They want it all And they don't want to share There's a whole lot of demons In this room And none of them believe In fighting fair Some sit on my left and some sit on my way. They talk so loud it's hard to disagree. I'm surrounded by the demons in this room. And there's no one here but me. I can't quite remember. And if it turns out I can't have my way anymore, I bet I know which way to turn when I walk out that door. There's a molecule of faith in this room. What they used to call a mustard seed There's a molecule of faith in this room And a book that says that's all I'll ever need I don't know where it is, but I hope I'll find it soon Cause nothing else Set me free. There's a molecule of faith in this room. And even though it's much too small to see, it's too small. And if I had the courage to believe, oh, I'd find the one who left it here. For me. Before I, I always introduce, um, I you know, always introduce a song with scripture. So I forgot to introduce this song. Uh, I forgot to introduce stubborn. That's the name of the song I just sang with a scripture. But I've got to go to it because I promise you the way this came to me, I, I almost because it makes no sense. So <laughs> God works in mysterious ways. Amen. So so I'm going to, you know, believe that believe that this is for somebody. All right. Uh, because uh, it's an unusual uh, stubborn should have been introduced, as far as I'm concerned, with this, with this verse. 1717 in St. Luke says this, And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Now don't ask me. I can't, I can't explain it, but I was supposed to introduce that song with that scripture. I truly believe that. So if that's for you, uh, uh, God, God bless you in it. Uh, you meditate on it and think about the word. This song, this last song I'm going to sing, I'm going to introduce this way. 11.1 in Hebrew says this. Now faith 
is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. We can trust him, just, just have, have faith. No, Jim, no, that person was Jim. We can trust him, just have faith. My God is a mountain mover. My God's gonna make a way. Can't count all the times he's moving. We can trust him, just have faith. Take a hopeless situation. Turn it up and all around. Nothing is impossible. I can't hold back. The mountain moves. Got a problem in my pathway. I feel I'm frozen here. Doubts are circling high above me, but in the shadows of my fear, the fire of faith is stirring, going inside of me, reminding me. Already believe My God is a mountain mover My God's gonna make a way Can't count all the times he's proven We can trust him just that way Take a hopeless situation Watch it turn it all around Nothing is impossible I can't hold back, I've got a shout My God, my God, my God Here's a mountain mover Yes he is He's a God of mighty miracles when the days are dark. I keep on trusting Him. I will not lose heart. My God is a mountain mover. My God's gonna make a way. Can't count all the times He's proven. We can't trust Him just that way. Take a hopeless situation. Watch Him turn it all around. Nothing is impossible. I can't hold back. I've got it. A mountain mover, my God's gonna make a way. Can't count all the times He's proven. We can trust Him just every Take a hopeless situation, watch Him turn it all around. Nothing is impossible. I can't hold back. I've got to shout, my God, my God, my God. There's a mountain mover. Trust him, just have faith. Thanks, Candy. That's right. Yes, he is. If I could have Mike Duff come forward for our scripture reading this morning. Morning, church. Morning. Awesome service so far. Everything yeah. moving right along, too. Looking good. Looking good. We know the Spirit of the Lord is here. There's no doubt about that. The Lord Himself is right here with us. I just wanted to say to everyone, I don't know, I don't have to say this, but please pray for Ukraine today. Please pray for these people. These people are being just slaughtered over there every minute. And the Gog of Magog is in control of that. I don't think there's any doubt that that's who he is. And I got a feeling, too, like I said before, that he's going to have those hooks put in his jaws and drawn to Israel here pretty soon. And like I've said before, Every player that's in this last end time right here is present right now. We're not waiting for anybody else. They're here right now. And we see who's in control. Russia's in control. The bear will move, and they are. These are ruthless people. These are ruthless people. I mean, they're there killing women, children, anything that moves. They'll kill them. They're ruthless murderers, is what they are. And sooner or later, folks, we're going to have to confront that. Now, we can run and hide because we got leadership that runs and hides. 
We don't have any leader. Let's just be honest. We don't have a leader in this nation. We don't. We do not. The only leader I can say that we have in this nation is right here. That's, right. That's the only leader that I see in this nation. And I plan on standing by that because we all know what's coming. This book has told us exactly what's coming, and we're seeing Russia move right now. Do you know how close Israel is to Russia? They're just to the north. That's the north country that the Bible speaks about coming to Israel. And they're making a move. And they're not going to stop until someone stops them. And it's pretty obvious we don't have the guts to do that. But I can tell you who does. Israel is going to become a big, big player in this before it's said and done. Because Iran is making that nuclear bomb, and they say now they could be weeks away from putting it together. Isn't it funny the way all this stuff is kind of going like that? Because I can tell you one thing about Israel. They have guts there. And they're not going to let. And we know that's not going to happen. They're not going to be annihilated in Israel. That's not going to happen because God's not going to let that happen. But these people in Israel are staunch people. They call them Jewish lightning for a reason. I can assure you. And they're not going to stand by and let these people make a, a bomb to shoot towards Tel Aviv to destroy Israel. They're not going to do that. They're not. I'm looking for any time for them to go up and annihilate half a Iran. And I do believe that's just me. Believe I think that's part of the hooks and the jaws that's going to draw all this forward down there towards Israel, myself. And it could happen quickly too, folks. I mean, we're talking weeks now. We're not talking years. It could happen in days. But I think it's going to all happen according to God's will. He's going to be the instrument leader right here. And he is. We're in for some tough times. We're in for some real tough times. They said that if Russia starts cutting back our oil that we're buying from Russia, if you can believe that, that our gas prices could go to $6 a gallon next week. Next week. I don't know about you, I can't afford $6 a gallon. I can't hardly afford what we're putting in the car now. This will all come to a head, folks. Soon. Very soon. Because I think we have enough patriots in this country right here to not let our country just go to hell in a handbasket. And that's where we're headed. The end times are not about us. Everybody keeps putting the focus on America. It's not on us. It's on Israel. So keep your eyes on Israel because that's where it's going to happen. I, God, I hope God blesses that country over there and sends them some help. I hope we can get up off our behinds and give them some help. We might not have to go over there and fight the war for them, but I believe that's coming. I really do. I'm sorry to say that, but that's, I just feel like that's coming. We're in for some tough times, so get ready, because it's going to get tough. But we all know that God's on the throne. He leads all this. And if you're not on that team with the leader right there, then you're in, you're in deep trouble. Time now is to get on the winning team, right now. Because if you don't, you're going to be in a bad situation. We're not guaranteed another second on this earth. We could all be gone just like that. You want to be prepared, just like Nikki was talking about, be prepared. The time is now. Not when I get a little better. Or not when I clean up. I can't tell you many people say, well, I'm coming back to church. It's like I heard Dave say, oh, I'm coming back to church. As soon as I get myself cleaned up and straightened up, I'm, I'm going to come on back. Well, you're never coming back. You're not going to ever come back. 
I thank God that my mother and parents led me to church right here in this church. I lived two doors down all my life till I was 13 years old. And I got away from church. Once we left this church, I, I left the church. I didn't make that transition to Amalon Road. I didn't, I didn't go there. I went there, but I wasn't there in spirit. I was just there in body. And I got away from the church. And I got away from God. And I did a lot of bad stuff. Don't ever look at me as any kind of saint, because I'm not. I'm just a sinner saved by God. That's grace, that's all. But I'm telling you, folks, the time is now. Get back in, get back in church and hearing this word. And I, I believe that it does make a difference what church you're in. A lot of churches out here are not preaching the same thing we were preaching at all. This is a Bible-believing church with a God-fearing man right here that gives us to us every Sunday. I thank God for him. I thank God for our pastor. He don't sugarcoat nothing because you're not supposed to sugarcoat nothing. You're supposed to tell it just like it is. And so I know God's blessing this church, and that's one of the reasons. Because we all stand in one accord right here, and we know what's going on. I'm not preaching to this church. I'm preaching to anybody that might be listening out there. Because I know this church is on. This church is on fire right here. There's no doubt in my mind. We tell the truth. The truth shall set you free. Because we hear lies every day. You know, in Proverbs, it says that when we have poor leadership, the people moan. Well, we're definitely moaning. I haven't heard any hoorays out there any time soon. But God knows it. God sees him too. God sees our fearless leader up there that doesn't know exactly where he is or what he's doing. But we got three more years of this. Unless something happens. So I'm putting trust in God. I stand with my country. I stand with the patriots. Whatever happens, happens. Because there's a time for peace and there's a time for war. And I think peace is starting to run dry. Going to have to make a stand sooner or later. Going to have to make a stand. All right, it's all on my soapbox today. All right, let's, I'm reading uh, John chapter 3. I'll be reading 16 through 21. If everyone, please rise for the reading of God's word. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it but to save it. There is no judgment awaiting those who trust him. But those who do not trust him have already been judged for not believing in the only Son of God. Their judgment is based on this fact. The light from heaven came into the world, but they loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. They hate the light because they want to sin in the darkness. They stay away from the light for fear of sins will be exposed and they will be punished. But those who do what is right come to the light gladly so everyone can see that they are doing what God wants. May God bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. When I came into the church this morning, <clears throat> I walked by that altar on the end right there, and it's interesting that they had a song about the altar. And I saw Donna and myself's church Bible. That's a Bible that we leave here, and we have others in the office and at home, but I saw both of our Bibles laying together, and there was a bottle of anointing oil and a box of tissues next to it. And I thought, how profound. 
because of the, as of the 31st of this month, we will have been married 37 years. Now, Donna, and everybody knows this, is a saint of God. And I don't know if I can say this on TV or not, but I'm a jackass half the time. And we've managed to stay together all of that time and our love grows stronger and stronger and stronger. And how profound, we got a bottle of anointing oil, a lot of times we needed that. We got a box of tissues, a lot of times we needed that. But we're still together and we're closer than we've ever been. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because we put our marriage under the blood of Jesus. That's what we did. Now if you've got problems, with your home, with your family, with relationships or whatever, let me tell you something. The only way that you will ever be able to fix it is to put it under the blood of Jesus. There is nothing more powerful than the blood of Jesus. It heals us. It, it teaches us. It helps us to grow. It protects us. Put your children under the protection of of the blood of Jesus. They might stray, but buddy, they will be back. They will be back. Everything needs to be put under the blood. I'm so glad that Caitlin prayed for an anointing on this church today. We needed that, and a lot of people have been coming to me talking about that. Well, where did the idea of that start? Well, it began in Exodus chapter 12 when the children of Israel had been held in captivity for so long, they were under brutal Egyptian slave masters, and now God is going to liberate them. And he gives a prescription of how they are to be liberated, and it is with the sacrifice of a perfect lamb. All of this was right here was a prophecy of what Jesus was going to do for all of us. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. That was around April. Speak to the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a, house, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little, let him and his neighbor next to him take one according to the souls, Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Now the lamb has to be without blemish. It has to be perfect and it has to be examined. Jesus Christ was examined even by heathen Roman governors and was declared perfect and sinless. A male of the first year you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats and you'll keep it until the 14th day of the same month and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. That was the day that Jesus shed his blood for us. It was on the 14th day of the month. Why? Because he was the ultimate Passover. He was the ultimate lamb. He was called the Lamb of God because he shed his blood for us and did something we could not do for ourselves. And it said they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two doorposts and on the upper post of the house wherein they shall eat it. I just made a cross. There was no such thing as a cross. That was thousands of years later when it would be used, but they made that symbol of the cross at that time because that's how Jesus was going to shed his blood. And it said they shall eat the flesh of it in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it, Eat not of it raw nor sodden with water, but roast with fire his legs, with his, his head with his legs, and the pertinence thereof. And listen to this. And that perfect lamb that you put up and examined and killed shall not let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that's what Jesus, they did with Jesus. They would not let him remain on the cross that day, but they had to take him down and bury him. And it, here's how they said to eat that Passover. With your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and the, your staff in your hands, and you eat it in haste. What is Jesus saying to us this morning? Do not wait yeah. 
to come to him and apply the blood for your addictions, for your sins, for your mess-ups, for all of the things that are going wrong in your life. Do it and do it in a hurry yeah. just as you are. Yeah. Yeah. Don't wait. You don't need to wait to prepare to do anything to come to Jesus. Come to him just like you are and let the blood of Jesus fix it. Yeah. It is the Lord's Passover. Yeah. And then God said, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I'll smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all of the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. Why? Because I am the Lord. That's what God said. And this blood shall be a token to you upon the houses where you are. And he said, when I see that blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. When the Lord looks at me, and when the Lord looks at you, if you are saved this morning, he doesn't see you as you are, and I'm glad he don't see me as I am. He sees the blood of his son covering you. That's what he sees. That is why it is so important that you be covered by the blood of Jesus for all of the things that are troubling you today. Hebrews 9.22 says, Almost all things are by law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood there is no remission. So many churches want a bloodless faith. They don't want the cross of Christ in their church. They don't want to put anything under the blood. That's just too gory. Well, let me tell you something. Your sins are gory too. And the only thing that will get rid of our rotten, dirty sins is nothing but the blood of Jesus plus nothing minus nothing. There's no other way to get rid of them. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. For this is the blood of the New Testament, Jesus said in Matthew 26, 28, which is shed for many for the remission of of sins. You know, you always hear about people with different diseases like cancer and this or that, and they, they, they pray that it'll go into remission, that it'll stop. Well, let me tell you something. The blood of Jesus will put your sins into remission, and it'll stop spreading, and it'll go away, and he will forgive you. Acts 20, 28, it says, Keep watching over yourselves and all the flock, which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, preachers, listen to this, be shepherds of the church of God, which what? He bought with his own blood. Sometimes I'm, I don't look it, but I'm scared to death when I get up here. I don't want to tell y'all anything that's wrong or unscriptural because y'all were bought with God's own blood, and I better tell it right when I get up here. And everybody else had better tell it right when they stand in authority in the church. But if you walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and what? The blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sins. 1 John 1, 7. Colossians 1, 20 says, And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, making peace through his blood that was shed on the cross. If you want peace, it's got to come through the blood, folks. It's got to come through the blood. And I'm going to tell you right now, there ain't no peace on earth outside of Jesus Christ today. This is a madhouse that we're living in down here now. And like Mike said, it's not going to be long before we're leaving the madhouse. And they can all have it. They can have their green deals and their purple deals and all of the deals that they want. They can get all of their marks of the beast and stamp everything with it, but we're going out of here without none of that garbage. But you better have the blood applied to your life or you're going, not going anywhere. You're going to stay here and have to deal with it. And I pray that there's nobody by the sound of my voice or watching by video, which the devil tried to cut off this morning, you don't know what trouble I had getting this message ready. Oh, my goodness. Let me tell you something. It's got to be under the blood, and it is so powerful. Hebrews 9, 14. How much more, then, will the blood of Christ, 
through the eternal spirit, offered himself unblemished to God, how much more will it cleanse our conscience from acts that lead to death that we may serve the living God? You got a guilty conscience this morning? Is something plaguing you? And you go, oh, Dave, I can't tell you what it is. You just don't know how awful I've been. No, and I don't care to know because the blood will cover it all. The blood will clear your conscience and that blood of Jesus will make you free. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, in the temple there were different courts and the most inner, inner place in there was where the priest could go only once a year and it was covered. It was called the Holy of Holies. It was where the Ark of the Covenant and all of that was in there. And the priest could only go in there once a year for, to atone for the sins of the people and sprinkle blood upon what was called the mercy seat that sat atop the Ark. And it was such a sacred place that the priest himself tied a rope to his ankle because if he went in there and he won't write with God, God would strike him dead as soon as he went through that curtain and they would have to drag him out because they could not go in there. And he had bells tied to the bottom of his robe so they could hear that he was still walking around alive in there because that was the most dangerous and holiest place on earth was the holiest of holies, but the Bible says now that Jesus has died and offered it. You know, when he died, as soon as he said it is finished, they said a pair of unseen hands tore that one-inch thick velvet curtain in half and exposed the holy of holies to everybody that walked by to see. Why? Because we can go in the holy of holies with confidence every time we need to pray if we are covered by the blood of Jesus because there's nothing holier than that. That's the privilege that we have of being saved. Hebrews 9, and Hebrews is one of the greatest books to learn about Jewish tradition and what needs to be done and what you are. Hebrews 9, 2, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. My redemption is eternal. Your redemption is eternal. It's forever and ever and ever. Few people realize the power of the blood of Christ. I've heard demons scream out loud when you start talking about the blood of Christ. They can't take it because that's where Satan was defeated at the cross of Christ. Oh, he might get a couple of battles in, but the war is over for him. He has lost and the blood of Jesus prevailed over all of it. One dark night in Egypt, a fearful time had come for one little Hebrew boy who was his father's firstborn son. With the angel of death passing low, it was hard to fall asleep, but one little lamb stood in his mind as he lay there counting sheep. He wondered why the young lamb had to die why his blood was on the door. Through the wind and rain, it had still remained, but he wanted to be sure. So he called out to his earthly father with a trembling voice so scared, cried, Father, will you please look and see if the blood is still there? He said, Son, now don't you worry, for the blood is there to stay. The wind may blow and the rain may fall, but it won't just wash away. The blood will stand the raging storm. It's been applied with loving care, safe, secure.